Please. Now, are women better at starting businesses than men? Well, a new report says they are. That's according to the 100 Stories campaign. Women place a higher emphasis on skills. They believe in finding the right talent for the success of their business. Well, let's talk to the CEO of Coral Kids Care, Child Care Business, Rachel Carroll, and the 100 Stories campaign report author and small business champion, Guy Tolhurst. Good morning. Um, okay. Guy, talk us through the research then. Yeah, so what, what's come out in our 100 Stories campaign is that female-led female businesses are placing a higher priority on investing in skills and talent. And we think that's really, really important, especially in the UK at the moment when, when there are questions over productivity and uh, these businesses, the high-growth small businesses, are, are placing a higher priority on skills and talent, but they're also creating a disproportionate contribution to our economy in terms of job creation, in terms of wealth creation and driving regional optimism. So we launched the campaign to tell stories of fantastic businesses like Rachel and Koru Kids. Uh, and Rachel, what, why is it, do we think, that, that women have this high emphasis they place on skills that, than men? Um, well, there's lots of research that women tend to talk a bit less uh, in mixed groups and listen a little bit more, so it might be something to do with that. I definitely, personally, place a massive emphasis on skills and talent development in my own team. I spend a lot of time thinking about it. Um, a lot of time thinking about recruitment and since we've got going with uh, the after-school childcare that we're delivering in London we've uh, trained over 2,000 nannies um, we've created over 20 jobs within our team ourselves um, and, there, and we've helped lots of families um, all over London with after-school care. What's, what worries me slightly with this guy is that to say that, that women put more emphasis on skills and recruiting I mean, what on earth are the men doing then? I mean, if, I mean if, when, when you're recruiting, whether you're a male or female boss, you're going to be looking at skills and, and sort of compatibility into the, for the workplace, aren't you? Yeah, I mean, I, I, the, I think the stats came through and said that it, it is the key ingredient. 86% of women said it was the key ingredient to their success was investing in skills and talent versus 56% for their male counterparts. So they're just placing higher priorities on, in other areas. So one of the areas was access to networks and, and, and building out those networks within, within their businesses. And um, what we want to do is, is really focus, um, focus where the attention is needed the most. And, and what we found is that with stuff in the news at the moment around House of Fraser and Maplin and job losses and things like that, we need to focus our attention on the businesses that are creating jobs. And these high growth small businesses, even though they make up only 1% of all small and medium sized businesses, they're creating one in five jobs. Um, so it's a, it's a significant contribution. And, um, and if we're, if we're looking at that, then we need to focus on, on the leaders of those businesses uh, that are then going to be creating those jobs. And through our research, we're finding that women, um, female-led businesses are more confident, they're more optimistic, especially around things like, like Brexit. Uh, but one of the challenges we have is that not enough investment is flowing into female-led businesses as well. And there are certain uh, biases within parts of the investment community, where there's an unconscious bias coming through in terms of investment teams investing in male-led businesses. So perhaps uh, female-led businesses that go through their investment rounds, they're then feeling more confident, having gone through those investment rounds, and they're then happy to invest further. And, and Rachel, have you experienced problems like that? Well, the biggest problem I experienced when I uh, raised my investment is that I was pregnant, and then I had a baby in the middle of it. And so trying to juggle those two things was incredibly hard. It was the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. Um, we ended up very, very successful. We um, got some fantastic investment. We ended up um, lucky enough to have our choice of investors at the end. So it all worked out, but it just brought home to me how important things like support for mums, support for new mums, childcare, all the things that is part of the, the mission of my business anyway, I kind of lived and breathed through my own uh, process of getting investment. Mm. Look, it's interesting stuff. Mm. Rachel, Guy, thank you both very much indeed. Any thoughts on that? That's Guy Stephen. At Sky Gillian. As always, on Twitter, we'd love to hear from you. Still to come on Sunrise, uh, we speak to the founder of a charity in Afghanistan.